Hey, and welcome back to Career Build Series, episode number 70. And so last episode took the seagull out. I did a bunch of work on it off screen and got it up to snuff. So let's go ahead and look at the map and see what we have for missions. All right, so I have a bunch of missions here. This one intrigues me here. This is a blue mail van requires servicing. So it's only 1400 but this will allow us to use the tow truck that I made a while ago. So that one's in the world. Uh, I'm not all that interested in doing this one. This one is search the area, look for emergency, couple tow missions, uh, service in the green tugboat. So let's go ahead and do this one. I built that that wrecker, and so I think this will be a fun one to do. So I'm trying to see what is road and what is train track here. So I'm trying to see if we have any road down here to the south. I don't think we do. So let's head over the north here. I know this road. So we'll head over the north up the road here up by the iron mine. Come turn left here. We'll come down this road and then we'll join over here. Let me see. There's, there's got to be a... See, this really... Going south, north or south, I think is really the same. I'm trying to see. I can't tell where the... It looks like there must be a road up here, but I have never actually been there. Let's uh just teleport there and check it out. Because I am unfamiliar with the area. Okay, so this goes all the way up here. Let's just uh, no clip here. And I'll actually figure this road out because I've never done it. So, it, okay, so it kind of follows the train tracks here. Nice. So it follows the train tracks and goes all the way up here to the, to the train hangar. So let's actually, we'll uh, launch, the, launch the tow truck at the train hangar. And we'll go ahead and we'll do that mail van. So nice. So finally, I have a mission we can do that uh, tow truck with. Very nice. So I fixed the gear in the Seagull. It was, I just needed one more block of space. It was touching, touching blocks, and so it was getting hung up. All right, tow truck is ready. All right, very nice. Ooh, didn't mean to drop it in the world. Hopefully it's not damaged. I forgot to lower it down because I did work on it recently. All right, let me just quickly check my custom menu, make sure all my cheats are off. Vehicle damage is on now, which is good. It was off, so it didn't damage that. Player damage, infinite fuel, electricity off. Good, so we're all set to go here. Let's get moving. All right. So parking brake is coming off, and let's get going. And we're just checking the back there. All right. So we might have a little bit of a different rope mechanics now because of the update. So I haven't used this since that, so I may have to, you know, keep an eye on it. So the speed on this is not incredible. We do about 50 miles an hour. Uh, it's geared on the low end so that it can tow well. And especially when we're towing something, we don't want to be going too fast. The vehicle we tow will not have brakes. So uh, hopefully we have a repair torch on here. I'm hoping. I think we could probably bring it and get a repair torch if need be. I should have checked. Let me uh, quickly stop while we're here. And we will go ahead and check to see if I have a repair torch because that is a good time to get it. I think I put one right behind the seat. Yep, okay. I thought I did. Just want to double check. So there was parking brake. Okay, let's get going here. And so, nice quiet vehicle. Can't really hear the engine all that much, which is nice. Let's go ahead, check. Uh, weather's good. It's locked, but it's, uh, you know, it, it is what it was last time. So we're going to go to the south here. We'll go past the drawbridge. Uh, should have the airport up on our right, and then uh, take the left path. I'll consult the map as necessary. But very cool getting the tow truck in. That's something that I've been wanting to use, and so we can use it now. So this, this is nice to get this in. I've been kind of hoping for a mission like that. But uh, Seagull is, is uh, working really well now, so that's been a lot of fun getting that in place. Build Challenge Delta going on, so I kind of wanted to make my own seaplane, what I essentially would have built if, you know, if it was not my competition. Uh, so... Oh, that was kind of fun. You know, I used to like the competitions or the um, the build challenges, the challenges, because they, uh, you know, they kind of they gave you some some 
ideas of maybe something you would never build before. They give you some restrictions. They give you some goals. You can see what your fellow competitors are building. You know, it's always nice to see when people post pictures of their builds on the uh, discussions, and you can kind of, you know, if you, s it, it was a good, uh, it was a good competitive atmosphere when I used to do the jersey challenges all the time because you had a lot of regulars who would who would uh, build stuff for those, and so it helped you up your game. You know, you'd see if if somebody was adding 20 interesting features on their build, you'd say, oh, you know, mine's a little bit lacking. Maybe I'll add some more cool features and. You learn something, your builds would get better. So, you know, I used to really like to do those. So I'm curious how this new um, reduce rope stretch is going to behave with some of some of the mechanics. It should work better, but they might just need to be tuned in a little bit, as they may not work uh, precisely how uh, we'd like, or how you know I built something is more accurate. So be kind of nice to get a little bit more driving in. What is that? Okay, it's just a barricade. I was curious what that barricade was there. Alright, so is this Ezo's gas station? I think it is. So there's a workbench there. I didn't know that. That's neat. Very cool. A lot of this stuff I haven't uh, seen because, you know, I often fly over and you don't see it. So... So we just passed the drawbridge coming up here on where the drawbridge comes around. So we should be looping to the right if I remember the map. Trying to, you know, I was talking about it before how, you know, if you keep your nose too much in a map, if you especially use the GPS all the time, which the map is essentially a GPS, it, uh, you don't recognize landmarks. And so I'm trying to make a choice to use that less and rely on it less so that I start to recognize landmarks. And so like we're coming up here, as you can see, we have the water off our left. So I know we're on the uh, southern edge coming along the water here. I, I kind of spatially know that the airport is over there. And so it should be coming up here. It should be on a left path uh, as we get to the south of the airport. And so I could consult the map, but I'm trying not to, you know, you know, like I was saying, you tend to remember where, uh, you tend to remember these landmarks. You know, when I would, you know, if I was going to drive, you know, a couple states over uh, in a tractor trailer at work, the, you know, if if you were had your nose in the GPS the whole time, you kind of zone out. And it will say, you know, turn right in one mile or, you know, take exit 32 in one mile. And so you're really not paying attention. Then it will tell you, hey, turn exit 32. So you often don't remember the route. When you don't have the GPS on, it helps you to remember because, okay, you see a sign and then, okay, you know, after that sign, it's the next exit. So you're paying attention to the geography a little bit more. I'm going to actually take a little screenshot while I'm here. And uh, you're paying attention to the geography a little bit more. And when the uh, when that sign comes up, you know, hey, it's it's the next exit. And so that is really, I think, an often a better way. And you're a little bit more engaged when you're driving that way. And so it's kind of cool to, uh, it's kind of cool every once in a while to not, you know, over-rely on the GPS. Don't even look at maps too much. And kind of enjoy the scenery because that scenery gives you all the cues you need to know where you're going. And you'll find that, you know, you can drive hundreds of miles without the GPS. You know, uh, it's something that a lot of people who, you know, don't drive a lot don't really um, experience. It's kind of an old-time thing, you know, we used to have to do is, you know, I remember we'd go, we'd go a four-hour drive as kids. And, you know, I would, as a passenger, remember how to get, you know, four-hour drive away because, you know, you, you didn't have GPS you really didn't have your nose on the map. You just kind of paid attention to landmarks. And what what is that? That is coal. Is that coal? There might be aluminum. I can't tell from this distance. It's probably aluminum. Let me just look. So we should be in this area here. So we're turning back up towards the uh, northwest here. Uh, we're in aluminum country. I really want to get back into the industrial frontier. You know, I've talked a bunch about how I think they could improve it. It would be nice to have some minor updates where they do a couple things. I don't think they have to do too many. You know, really make it so that we can do bottom dump on the train so you don't have to bring a truck with you to offload uh, metals. Uh, make it so you can turn on and off the 
the dumps for the uh, when you refine your materials. That way you can, you know, do it a little bit more realistically. Also make some dumps that you don't have to use a train. Make it so that everything can be done with either truck or train. And that really makes it so that, you know, I would love to build like an Australian style road train to move aluminum. You know, kind of RP that as, um, as bauxite is very uh, prevalent in Australia to my understanding. You know, so, you know, from bauxite you get alumina. Alumina is aluminum oxide, so it's oxygen bonded to aluminum. And then if you do electrolysis, you break that that bond and the oxygen comes off the aluminum and you now have pure aluminum. And so, you know, kind of RP and doing some, you know, Australian style road trains from the aluminum mine would be awesome and a lot of fun. But the issue being, you could do it with trucks, I think, more readily, but you still have to like drive onto the tracks, which is unrealistic. And so, you know, it'd be kind of nice if there was duplicate areas where you had a dump for trucks and you had a dump for trains and so you want to use a train you can use a train if you want to use a truck use a truck there's a cow if you want to see a cow there's some cows i'm going to be taking some screenshots this is kind of how i remember my adventures is you know is screenshots and so it's it's kind of fun you know it's it's my screensavers on my monitors it you know it, it's directly to my screenshots folder so it's kind of nice i've seen you know just sitting at my pc doing stuff i'll see a bunch of the missions i've done previously so we're looking for a village so we should have come through here and there is enzo cat's village okay good so i know where we are but this is you know paying attention more to the scenery i think is nice you know now i know what that village looks like and so i should be able to drive this this route without you looking at the map as much. You notice I'm pretty much not in the map very much at all. And part of that is just, you know, paying attention. And it's kind of something that, you know, as somebody who's driven, you know, many, many, many miles, long distances without using maps or GPS, that you start to get used to it, you know, and and it it uh, it, it helps your navigation ability. Like, you, you know, you start to know what uh, direction you're going. You start to know if you're going north, south, east, west. You know, and it just it makes you a little bit more involved in it, and it makes it more fun. If you're constantly, you know, looking at the map, looking at the GPS, just eyeballing the uh, moving map there, you're really kind of missing the scenery, and it. so it's kind of nice to look at the scenery. Is that some sort of animal up there on that hill there? Horses. That is another thing I'd love the devs to do is uh, make so we can ride horses. You know, that would be cool. Uh, some farming stuff would be cool, I think, for some major updates, even DLC. Fishing, of course, uh, for major update DLC. You know, uh, very excited in that sort of thing. You know, I, there's a bunch of people, you know, I just got off the comments, unfortunately, on Steam, uh, where there's a bunch of negativity. But, you know, a lot of people, there there's some people who, will, you know, kind of poo-poo the DLCs, and I think the DLCs are great. You know, the game needs it to stay as a profitable business, and if they're not a profitable business, they they have to move on to another game. And, you know, and so I think it's it, it keeps games alive. It's a business after all, and so we kind of need it. And as long as it's value for money, I think, you know, the last DLC came out, it was on sale day one, and I paid between 7 and $8 for it. You know, I can't get a sandwich for 7 or $8. You know, I could get a really bad sandwich for less than 7 or $8. But, you know, even if it's not perfect of a DLC, that's a reasonable price. And, you know, you know, you think about what a movie costs. You know, movies, two hours entertainment, and probably cost more than $7 for most people. And so, you know, if you just got two hours of entertainment out of it, you know, you get two hours of uh, entertainment out of a movie, you think you got your money's worth. You get two hours entertainment out of a game that you paid the exact same money for or less, people will poo-poo it. And it's like, I don't really get that. You know, if you start thinking about these things as, you know, money for hours entertainment, for example, I don't like to go on vacation. I, I'm not going to go spend six grand to go somewhere and to hang out by the pool or go to the beach. That doesn't interest me, you know. And, you know, that, that could be $600 a day you're spending on vacation. That doesn't really interest me. You know, but people do that, and they'll frivolously, not frivolously, for them, they'll throw that money away, or they'll they will spend that money on themselves, not throwing the money away if they enjoy it, but, 
you know, and then the same people kind of poo-poo it if, you know, they spend eight bucks on something and they disliked it. You know, it always sucks when you spend some money on something you don't enjoy it. But, you know, I think it's there's a little bit of perspective to have is it's a pretty small price and it keeps the lights on with the game. And, of course, if, you're not, if you don't think it's value for money, then you shouldn't buy it. All right, so we should, I think we turned here at the base of the airport or we turned here. I think we turned there, so we're looking for a turn off. This should be it, so I think that's it. So let's expect this to be our turn off. You know, the windshield's a little bit tight, but it's not bad. You know, ideally what I would like is more window pieces. These are 45 degree angles. What I would like is half of that. If we could get uh, 22 and a half degree windows, that would be beautiful. And in, so right now, these windows take up, what is it, two, three blocks? They take up three blocks of space. There's, look at that, navigation skills. Uh, they take up two or three blocks in, you know, if you did 22 and a half, maybe they take up two blocks. You know, you could do one that had, I don't know what the angle would be. Uh, I'm trying to think of the angle off the top of my head. Maybe 12 and a 12 and a half if you did one block, so it went from here to one block up. Uh, that would be really cool for being able to, no, these are twos, so that takes up. But having some different slopes on the windows would be helpful. So I was talking about this before, uh, some ways to tow, so let's go ahead and put this in neutral and set the brake. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our hazards, try to do a little bit of RP here. All right, and so let's try to get a little pick picaroni. Again, some more, a uh, little more documentation of, of our adventures here and potential screenshots. See how the guy turns? I hate that. The character turns when you, uh, <laughs> when you uh, unpause the camera mode. In Stormworks 2, what, you know, it's not going to be called Stormworks 2, but in the next game, I would really love to see them have a better camera, especially for those of us who are producing content for the game. That would be nice. But I always like to kind of take a look at these vehicles. These are really cool, some of these vehicles. And so they're kind of neat to design. Let me see, or to look at. So I can't push this presently. Okay, let me see. Do I have access to the brakes? What are you? Key button off. Okay, I'm trying to just see if this has a brake release. AD steering, what is that? That is parking brake. Okay, good. So I can uh, use the parking brake there. I'm going to have to, because I'm now stuck in here, I'm going to have to no clip again. Good reason to have that creative menu on. So I was talking before, like I don't know exactly how this particular mail van is built, but if, you're, if your wrecker is not that strong, you can pick it up from the back. The back's generally, you know, in a real vehicle, they're generally pretty light because they don't have a motor there, and the motor's here. So we're going to actually hook up to the front. Uh, we should be strong enough to do that. If we're not, we can hook up to the back. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and parking brakes coming off. Okay. So I don't. I think I'm probably in second gear here. Nope, I was in first. Okay. I just revved up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and back into this. Okay, and I might do, I'm going to do third person, make it a little bit easier to also make it so that you guys can see what I'm doing here. Let's go ahead and mag alls will go on. All right, and this way you guys can kind of see what I'm working with as well. So, all right, here we go. So this, uh, <laughs> this blue mail van is actually pretty, pretty narrow. Part of it, it doesn't have two seats, and the nice thing with that is the... The Red Cabrio is one of the other tow missions, and that one is incredibly wide. It's, uh, you know, I think they use some people's builds for their um, static vehicles or for their mission vehicles. And so you end up getting some vehicles that are very, uh, they're a little bit on the wide side and the scale's off, which isn't a big deal. It's just something you have to think about when you're doing it here. So I'll be grabbing some screenshots. I hope people don't find that annoying. It's just kind of... I think it's good. It also I uh, can kind of find a picture that I like for the uh, for the thumbnail. All right. So what I can do here is, as you see, this will raise that up, and so I can leave it down there, or I can lower the boom a little bit. That's fine. We're off the ground. 
Let's go up a little bit. So uh, what I want to do now is I want to go boom winches down. Let that sit on the ground. And then uh, what I want to do is raise the boom itself up to pick this up. That will allow me to get it higher. Because ideally, I don't want this too high. So I want to go uh, boom winch down and boom up at the same time. And that will be pretty good. And then I'm going to go boom winch down. And so I'm trying to just set the wheels at the right angle. The correct angle. Not a right angle, but a correct angle. And so... Last little screenshot, and then we'll get out of here. But, um, but yeah, so I, I also like this arid biome as it's, I think it's very attractive to look at. I think it's uh, aesthetically pretty pleasing, this area down here. I would like to get back into the the Sawyer Islands. I've kind of got away from there, but I'm, I need to buy some more islands. Uh, so let's see what it said. I think it said something about repairing this bad John. Uh, servicing transport. Okay, it just says transport to the garage. So it must not need repairs. So I think if we continue on this, it goes up into a mountain, I think. Yeah, I think it spirals up here. So we don't want to do that. So we need a bang of you. Go back on the road we were, and we want to stay right at the fork. All right, very nice. So let's go ahead and get in. And we will shut the door. Park brake comes off. Let's go ahead. We should be in first, I think. Nope, we're in reverse still. Okay. I stalled because I went from reverse to first. So we should be able to bang a U here. We'll leave our, our uh, flashers on. Often you'll see tow trucks doing that when they're transponing. So kind of go third person. You guys can kind of watch how this articulates. You notice, so one thing I did, if you can remember back to when I built this, was I had to put the two main pivots that hold that... Um, I forget what that's called. Uh, tow truck driver is somebody who watched my videos, and they had told me. So if if you see this, uh, please put it in the comments. Ooh, I got paint to do. But I put those two pivots close together. That allows me to turn tighter without that hitting. So we have a little bit of a squeal. I don't think did I? I never geared these. Uh, never gripped these wheels up. These need to get XML gripped. Because I'm, I am pulling a vehicle. Oh, you know what? I never shut the parking brake off. So we're actually doing probably all right here. I just need to turn the parking brake off. I didn't want to do it until I had it up. And now it is up. So so that <laughs> should be fine, actually. It uh, it uh, was towing it with the, uh, with the car's parking brake on. So we should be doing all right now. There we go. So it, it's spinning the tires because I tapped it. You know, it squats when I upshift, so... Oh, and then it uh, it asses me. So, it's kind of fun to do this little uh, mail van mission. Been looking forward to this since I built this tow truck. So, you know, as you can see, currently without grip tires, I might grip up the tires, but ooh, my tack's not working. But you see we're doing 23 miles an hour. Luckily, we don't have to go too far, but uh, I, I do need XML grip this. Let's check left. Left is clear. Right is clear. Let's turn right. Okay, good. But it's nice to get into this. I think this is a nice living world. You know, for obvious reasons, I think, you know, this is a... Both thematically, you know, this is kind of... This is a desert. You know, what does a desert have? Lots of nothing. And so you have big, wide expanses. You know, one of the things I think they did a pretty good job with this industrial um, frontier DLC was in the arid biome, it's kind of supposed to be a sparse, uh, you know, very road-heavy, very rail-dependent area. And so that makes sense. You know, when you have a big sparse area, you have big, wide highways because the goods that need to move through the sparsely populated areas to more heavily populated, you know, city centers. So we're up to 44 now. Uh, city centers, you know, you have a lot of trucking. And so you'd have a lot of roads. You know, if you go out to the American Southwest, you know, you have these long stretches of, of roads. And they even artificially will, I think we turn, yeah, we turn right here. I think they even artificially will make turns because you get uh, what's known as highway hypnosis. If you're going on a straight 
you know, flat road for too long, you start to get almost hypnotized. And so it keeps you more engaged if you have to turn every once in a while. So they'll actually put some artificial turns in. They'll make it change directions. Arti you know, it seems almost arbitrary because if it was too long and straight, you know, you would get highway hypnosis. So they don't do that. I think this is where we're going right up there. But uh, so kind of interesting. So this is kind of that landscape that you'd have in, uh, you know, parts of Arizona and, you know, New Mexico. I haven't been to New Mexico in a very long time. But... Um, I went there for training for one of my airlines, but uh, but yeah, so I, I kind of like this. It's it's very truck and rail dependent, and so it, thematically that makes sense for you know ha this having most of the mineral stuff. I think that's uh, kind of cool. You know, I would like to see more biomes. I really would love to see, if not you know them move these continents further away, the ability to have a map editor you know probably won't come in this in this game but ho hopefully in the next game they do that you know that would be nice to have a map editor where i can put this biome wherever i want because personally you know if i do a lot of flying and so you know it takes me in the seagull which is not that fast it does about 186 knots max speed you know it only takes me 15 minutes to go to the arctic and so i would love to see some further flung areas. Okay, so we're going to we're going to overdo this. So this needs to be repaired. So we're going to try to park this in the garage. And so my mirror is not set up well enough. Let's see if I can do this with the mirror. You know, like I said, I was a, you know, am am a commercial truck driver, but the uh let's see uh how well I can back this into the garage from the cab. So you want a nice low reverse. Uh, low gear, not only does it give you torque, but it's going to help you. It it keeps you going slow. As you can see, we just, just kind of kicked it there. So I'm going to try to do it with the mirror, you know, uh, see what I can get here. You know, it's a little bit jumpy. Uh, part of, Yeah, it's a little bit too jumpy to be doing this, but I'm going to try to, let me try to get it in there. We'll play for a minute, see if I can't uh, get this in from the cab. So, you know, big part about getting a trailer backed up properly is your setup. You know, you could usually tell if you had a new driver if their setup was all wrong. You know, so I'm gently looking at the corner of the garage. You probably can't see it very well, but right there. And then now I've lost it, so I need to start turning the other way. See, it's it's a little bit jumpy. And the other thing is that, that rear boom, I forget what it's called, it is also popping up, so it makes it a little bit hard to uh, see. Let me check it in third. All right, I'm just going to back it in. See, see how that pops up? So it makes it hard because I can't see, and it also won't turn like that. So probably not going to be able to back this in. Like, see, I can't turn it. It'd rather lift up than turn. So that's not a big deal. Let's go ahead, and we'll put this down. But that was a fun little mission. I haven't, I haven't, been, to, I haven't been to either of these garages yet. These are very cool. So let's take a walk around the garage and kind of admire the work. I think, you know, unless you go here all the time, you may not... Uh, like me, I've not even ever seen this. All right, we're in uh, neutral. Let's go ahead and park and brake on. Park and brake is on. Let's jump on out. All right, and let's set the van down. Let's get another picture. Love the pictures. Ah, oh, come on. I hit, I hit unpause, which I didn't mean to do. All right, beautiful. All right, so let's uh, set this down. So we're just going to go boom down. Lay that, sit, lay that, set that on the ground like so. We'll go ahead and we'll set the park brake. I like doing a little bit, little bit of this RP. You know, that's a lot of fun for me is doing some RP. All right, nice. So let's go ahead and that mission is done. Not a ton of money, but it was fun. You know, I understand why that doesn't pay a lot. Uh, the 
the tow truck, make it a tow truck, doesn't cost you a lot. And so really the investment is pretty low, and so of course the payout should be low. The, the issue is the time investment, I think. And so sometimes it would be kind of nice if some of those would be a little bit more money. So we can, we have some diesel and some jet there. What else do we have? What's that supposed to be? The, the um, So that's minerals. Okay, so this is a workbench too. I've literally never been here. This is very cool. I have never been here. I Is it going to pull my truck in? It is. This is cool, man. I have never been here. Let's spawn this inside of here. Okay, where's it? Okay, it spawns here. It spawns outside. This is very cool. I like this. So this will allow us to do some more RP and some more missions here. This is awesome. This actually gives me some good ideas for uh, potentially the next build challenge. Uh, the next one should be a ground challenge. And uh, it would be kind of cool to have it at a, at, have it at a uh, gas station or something like this. Uh, you don't have to pay for this. There's no buy price here at the garages. You know, I would really appreciate it if the devs would uh, name something after me. <laughs> that would, uh, you know, a little bit uh, self, self-aggrandizing. But it would be nice if I could get something named after me. Uh, potentially, maybe an airport, maybe a, uh, even a gas station. But uh, that would be kind of cool. But uh, yes, yeah, this is a neat place. I like this. So definitely have workbenches here, and the other, the other gas station we went to was that we went by Zizos, I think. Zizos, I think, over here had a. Uh, that also had a workbench, so you can spawn there. You know, I'm still finding a lot of things out. Charles's train shop. I don't know if that does. I know you can put some things places. That is JSI for. 80 grand. We have a bunch of money. As you can see, we have 260,000. So part of what I'm doing here too is I'm looking at places I want to buy, and I'm kind of thinking about what I want to, how I want to play, what I want to do. And so I really like to keep my gameplay pretty open. You know, when I start feeling something, I tend to get a little obsessive over what I'm working at at the time. And I see a lot of people get like that. You know, they really, you know, they they get building and they start to fall in love with the build. And I did that with the seagull, and so now it was all about the seagull. And then once that kind of gets done, you know, you uh, you put it in the gameplay, and then you start thinking of other things you want to do as well. So I'm trying to think of uh, how to what we want to do with the uh, you know the next episode of the career build series here. And so some thoughts I've had is do some more container work. So one thing we could do is if we want to stay on the road, one thing I could do is build a road train. We cannot do proper dollies. Uh, we can do fixed dollies. So a proper dolly, you have a lead trailer you have a dolly and you have a kite and that doesn't work really well in game the mass of the dolly is too low so it tends to sink into the ground it doesn't behave right it has all sorts of issues but you can do a fixed dolly where it's lead and then the dolly is attached to the kite so you can make it look correct but it's actually not three pieces it's only two pieces and that works better and so uh you know, one thought I had is if we go down here and we buy the JSI dock, this is 80 grand. That's not a, not a ton of money. And JSI dock has the ability to launch uh, sea vessels. It also has the ability to pick up containers. And so I do have my slide, was it slide 45 trailer that I built last career build series. I do have some tractors from the last career build series. Uh, so we could do something like that. And we do some, you know, I really haven't explored this from the land much. I've flown all over it, but it would be kind of cool to do some uh, do some land transpo, some trucking, some trains with containers. Uh, we also have, wowza, 230,000 for the uh, for the power plant. So those are some thoughts is to actually tr do some transpo with some truck and trailer and go ahead and kind of transport some containers, that's a thought. The other one is to get deep into some mineral stuff. And so we could do some of that. The other thought is up here we have Draymore. Draymore is 50 grand, that's not a ton. Uh, 40 grand for spy cakes. So if we buy the two of these, that's not a huge investment. That's 90 grand. I, I don't like having too much money in the bank here because if you have a ton of money, you know, there's not really any motivation. As soon as I spend a bunch of money, ooh, I need to go. I need to go work again and make some money. And so, between Draymore, I can spawn larger vehicles over here. I can spawn some stuff in the train uh, hangars, and I can spawn some uh, ocean-going vessels. 
And I started working on a coal miner, so it'd be kind of cool to get into some coal mining. We also have the diesel cell up here. We could sell some diesel. So just some kind of, you know, kind of playing around, seeing what I want to do next here. Let's see what this rescue is here. Quarry dump truck has an emergency, so that's way out there. I don't have anything really built that I can get there. Uh, we could take the seagull up, fly to Draymore, and what is this mission? So it's pretty silly. We know the quarry dump truck has an emergency. It's a quarry dump truck. It's likely in the quarry. But um, so I think let's uh, let's see what do I want to do here. Let's go ahead and let's head back. What's the timer on this? Um, an hour. All right, so let's take a drive. So we're currently down here. Let's drive up to FJ. I'll time lapse that out so you don't have to watch the pain. And then we'll take the seagull up to... Probably this, I'm trying to think what's going to be. Likely it's going to be an emergency. We have to rescue some people. Can't really dump them off there. This quarry train. Let's go ahead and drive back, and we'll see what missions pop up. That's going to take us a little while, and then we can see what missions pop up. Let's do this instead. Let's grab this back into this workbench, and let's pull out the car. So I also made a, this is just to kind of, you know, change up my, oh, my, 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 my. Uh, so I actually added the ability to put a top on this car. So let's see. If I go in, I grab my top. So here is a convertible top for this. So if it's raining out, I can RP by, I just put that convertible top on. It doesn't, so the way it mounts is kind of neat. It just has a hard point connector here. Hard point connectors, you'd need a hard point in this because it also prevents lateral movement. So it will prevent up, down, and lateral movement, lateral and yawing movement. And it has a little uh, connection point right here. If that was a connector, I'd need at least three connectors to do it. So hard points are a great addition to the game. So we're going to go convertible top. The weather's nice, but... The car is a little bit faster, and it also, it you know, I haven't really had a chance to use it all that much, so it'd be kind of nice to use the car. And so, I'll go ahead and take a quick pick with the car. But this is fun uh, using, you know, uh, some different vehicles and getting some of these in. You know, it, it's nice to get some land vehicles back in. I think that's definitely probably what the next build challenge is going to be: is a land vehicle. So that should have put all the tow trucks. Ooh. Stand by. Stand by. Hello, sir. We're gonna we're gonna nab this dog. We we now have a wiener dog. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Sorry, taking a ton of screenshots, but now that we have a wiener dog, we need it to be needs to be recorded. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. It's, uh, yep, I already had the engine on. All right, so the car is a little bit faster. So the fuel that we had in the truck is now in this uh, gas station. Okay, parking brake is still on. So car is a lot faster than the truck. Accelerates faster and it drives faster, so. Seems like I need to tune my uh, steering system a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so this would be kind of a nice way to get back. Oh, a little bit of a vehicle change there. So I'm really digging those. That that's a good detail. I I really haven't explored this area at all. Like I said on the on the uh, on the ground, and so it's um, you know, this has been my main continent that I've kind of been on for quite a while now since it came out, and so it's uh, you know, it's definitely kind of neat. The that breathes a little life into it, you know. And this is like I said, this is pretty realistic to like the American Southwest. Is just like huge, vast expanses of nothing. And, you know, dotted with some, you know, POIs. And that's how it kind of is in here. And, oh, is that a cat? What's that noise? You hear that noise it made? That's very interesting. What was that? Is that Chupacabra? Hello?
Hello? Can I pick you up? Are you a wild creature? Hello? Very interesting. Very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a cat before. Sounds like a cat when it's puking. They make that noise right before they puke. Alright, stay clear. I don't want to drive over you there, sir or madame. But it would be nice if, uh, you know, it would be another nice addition to the game to have animal husbandry. Uh, you know, the ability to, say for example, I'm not a big <laughs> fan on, uh, on the you know slaughterhouses and, or anything like that, but uh, I suppose that's a reasonable element to add in the game. But you know, I you know like if you went out and you got some cows, you know you could do kind of like the dog whistle. But you know, think about like Minecraft. If you have wheat in your hand, a cow will follow you. You could go get cows. You could build a paddock for them, and you could uh, you know if they're within say a paddock, or you bring them into a milker. And you could get milk, and you could have a dairy industry in game. That would be really cool as well. So little things like that, I think, really spark people's imagination. You know, this game, in essence, is a sandbox, and we get to play in the sandbox with whatever we like and build the toys we want in the sandbox. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and I will time-lapse this out so you don't just have to watch me drive the whole way. And we'll see you when we get there. So we have arrived back at the FJ Warner docks. And so we have our new buddy here. So let's take the dachshund, the dachshund, the vena. And uh, I think, I don't know if the box is still in here. I had a boxer, but I don't know what happened to it. There it is. There. <laughs> We're going to fill that sucker up with dogs. All right, nice. So let's go ahead and we will put this away. So it's nice to get uh, both the tow truck and the convertible in. So it's also nice, as you can see, I showed you the uh, convertible top, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's see. What do we have? We need to, let's see. So let's uh, let's look at the map. And I was trying to see if a, I don't, didn't see if a mission popped up out whilst I was out. Nope, so we still have the same missions here. We have this one here and the, the truck up at the uh, have the truck up here so let's go ahead and I think what I'll do is let's go ahead and let's grab I'm trying to think six let's go ahead and we'll grab the seagull we'll check out this one this one has an hour left on it that's 13 grand so we'll come here we'll we'll uh, land the seagull if we find this person and we'll scoop up this rescue here We'll come up here, we'll land at Draymore, and we'll buy Draymore, and I will take the little cart, and I'll go up here, and the likelihood is this quarry dump truck is up here, and that will need servicing. So we'll go do that, and then likely people will need medical attention, and so I'll take that little cart up and we'll go here so we'll see so i if we buy drum more i can launch something different so i'm not going to bring the cart with us initially so let's do that so we'll grab the seagull i have fixed the gear on the seagull it was uh like i said it was just essentially this slid back uh, i was one block too close and it was rubbing as you can see we have a tail number now so it's november 66 sierra golf for seagull and we have the seagull art there. I also put in some logo lights here. Really love the new gimbal mount. I think the devs have been doing a fantastic job with uh, the updates. They've really been uh, doing a lot of updates people have been asking for. And so with this, before 
I had to put these lights right underneath here, and they never, sh uh, you never got a good shine on these for your logo lights. Now they're way out here, and I can bend them, I can angle them, and it hits the logo. So that's a really cool addition. I also can easily angle my landing lights. A lot of builds, I've had to put them on pivots. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just angle them down. This light here, uh, this does not move, just the wheel. And so now this light articulates left and right alongside of the wheel. And that uh, allows me to, uh, essentially it acts as though it's on the nose wheel and the nose wheel's turning. So uh, really cool stuff there. Let me just make sure nothing's in here. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and spawn. I added the anti-ice system. So that was a system that needed to go on here. So the anti-ice system is on here. So we'll talk about that really quick. So often on a plane like this, you'd have what's known as pneumatic uh, de-icing boots. And so there's a difference between anti-ice and de-ice. Anti-ice prevents ice from forming. De-ice allows it to start to form, and then you break it off. Icing on planes is a nightmare. You know, the wing is designed to be the way it needs to be to, to fly. And if you start putting a bunch of ice on there, it changes the shape of the wing. It can cause the wing to stall, and you essentially have a wing that doesn't work anymore. And so there are these black uh, plastic boots, and they're inflated. So you have air that goes in here. It will blow up the boot, and it will break the ice off. So what I have here is a rain sensor, and I have an outside air temperature that does a bunch of functions. But So that tells me my outside air temperature. And it also tells me if it's raining. So if it's raining and the temperature is below zero, which is how you get ice, it will uh, put on two ice warning indicators. And they'll go on right there and there. And then if I flip the switch on, it will take about 10 seconds to uh, get rid of the ice. And so it's kind of a cool system to operate. So let's go ahead and we want start up one. So I should go through my whole flow. Batteries, voltage, beacon, fuel. Okay, that's up and running. Gen 1 is coming on. Hydraulics 1 is coming on. Clear 2. Starting up 2. Gen 2 and hydraulics 2. I'm going to verify our hydraulic pressure is climbing. Good. Flaps coming down one notch. Good. Parking brakes coming off. We're going to go ahead and we'll set up. We're going to go check this area here. Uh, set waypoint and there. So we're going to go put that in the GPS. We're going to take off going. I don't know where the wind is currently. I can't see my wind indicator from inside. I'm trying to think. It's, some of the, the uh, PFDs will show it. So if we look there, it's coming from the left. So see how the wind indicator is over there? Uh, I should put a windsock on the field somewhere. But you'd look at your windsock. You'd, re you'd listen to ATIS. It would tell you where the wind's from. So the wind is coming from this direction. So we need to take off on runway 07. So 072 is the runway heading up to, let's say, we don't want to go that high because we're almost there. Uh, November 66 here. Uh, golf is uh, ready for takeoff runway 2, runway 7. Uh, 660 six, golf, you're clear for takeoff, uh, climbing to 1,000 feet, uh, heading 070, 070, and up to 1,000 feet, uh, 660 six, golf. All right, nav light strobes, taxi and landing lights are coming on. Do a quick checklist here. Uh, hydraulics are set, flaps are set, props are full forward, lights are on, four takeoff checklist complete. All right, so we'll start powering up here. Make sure I think I had vehicle damage on. Everything's set. Okay, good. We're good to go here. So we're going to start getting ready. We're already clear for takeoff from the t from the tower. So if you look here, uh, if I steer my nose, you notice the nose, uh, the taxi light will turn. Because often they're on the nose wheel. All right, clear for takeoff. Rotate, pause rate, gears coming up. Over 100 knots, flaps, is com flaps are coming up. So I'm just gonna do a quick 
turn here, and we're looking right for where we're going here. So he told us Bromo heading uh, six six zero golf. You're uh, cleared your own navigation up to the north. Uh, cleared uh, own navigation up to the north. Six uh, Sierra golf. All right, so let's go ahead and let's turn on the autopilot, and I'll turn the GPS on. Shut the heading, hold off. And we'll start getting down low here. We have this. We're looking for a uh, most likely a boat, so we need to let's read the mission here. Yep, crew boat gone missing. Thirteen grand. Okay. So we need to get down low. Let me check my trim. Trim is coming down there. I really need to re adjust the uh, clamps for my pitch. But we'll start slowing down here. And so, we, are we going directly there? We are. So we're 0.4 minutes out, so we're only half a nautical mile from that waypoint. So let's go ahead and we want to set our current heading of 289. So 289, put heading hold back on, and we can deselect the GPS for now. And that will allow us to look for the sucker. It's a little bit foggy, so we have to keep that in mind. So we are currently, uh, we've passed it, so let's go ahead, and I'm actually going to Tuck the autopilot off here. It's always good to have it set up and ready for backup here. So we need a search. So I'm going to start looking to my uh, to the south there. So I need more rudder authority. So what I should do is dial it in to right where the you notice the turn slip indicator. That sh ball should be centered. I don't think it'll actually center properly. Okay, there it is. I just saw it right there. Nice. Okay, so we're going to prepare for landing. So it's a water landing. Uh, gears up, parking brakes off, flaps are coming in. I need to add a ton of thrust because I just put in my flaps. Flaps give me a lot of drag, and I was already pretty slow. I was already right around stall speed. So stall is not really a speed, but, you know, as you slow down, you need to increase your angle of attack. Stall is an angle of attack problem, not a speed issue. Oh, no, that's not it. What is this? I've got a beacon at 12 o'clock, and I've got this ship off to my side. That's interesting. Maybe the mission's just so old that person drifted. All right, so we're in the water now. So, okay, there are the people. Oh, whoa, 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 come on. Simmer down now, guy. I was going too fast here. All right, so I need to kind of steer with my propellers. So this one's coming back. That one's going forward. Let's start steering. Let's start coming back on them to sync them up. So this is why I have my propellers set up the way I have them is I can control both of them with the up key and I with the up arrows and I can also independently control them with the physicalized ones here and that really helps me to uh, to do to steer up. What I might do is currently the way I have it set up is currently the way I have it set up is one and two on the keyboard are the propellers. What I could do is three, four, so three and five throttles, independent throttles, and four, six, something like that, so that I can uh, independently walk the throttles. I might do something like that so that I don't have to look at them, but it's not the end of the world here. Let me try to go forward here and find these people. They're right behind my compass. There they are. Okay, so I'm going to start just coming back on starboard, and all I have to do is just walk that starboard and bring it back to where it is, so it's like eight and change. And so as you can see, I can just gently walk one. So I do the same thing in a in a boat. You essentially, you can run both of them up and then just either go on turn left, I can increase starboard if I want to, uh, if I want to, you know, go the other direction is to decrease it. Okay, so we're now in beta. I'm gonna leave it running. I was trying to jump out the window the last episode. As you can see, they're the same square size. I was trying to jump out the window. I got distracted. The cat was uh, howling in my ear for food. Well, that's probably why I should shut the props off. Cat was, uh, it wasn't, he actually didn't want food. He was, uh, he wanted to give me one of his toys as a present. So he was, uh, he's been a funny guy. So he was screaming in my video and uh, I was, so I got distracted. I was trying to uh, jump out a window instead of, uh, Trying to jump out a window instead of jumping out the hatch. Somebody caught that. That was pretty funny. I thought that was good. 
late night, trying to, uh, wow, they're way over there. What's that? Is that a life ring? That's a life ring. Okay. So the boat's on fire over there. We have to get over there, too. Yeah, let's see how... F that's a big boat, dude. Look at that. That's actually a pretty big boat. A lot of people don't play much career, and they don't realize that the missions do get more challenging as the longer you play. It says right in the XML file, uh, mission difficulty. So if you like more challenging missions, you know, um, you need to play a little bit longer, you can change that, uh, that to a higher mission difficulty. You'll start getting more... Uh, difficult missions as time progresses. So often what they'll do with these uh, seaplanes is they will you know to taxi in the water you especially in a multi-engine you can again do asymmetrical thrust like I'm doing here and what you'll do is once your aileron gets effectiveness you can dip that pontoon in the water and what you, you know, if you want to do a high-speed tax in the water, you get up to high speed, and it starts pushing the plane out of the water. And it goes on plane like a boat does, how it, like, rises up out of the water. And then what you'll do is you'll tip your wing, and you'll touch that pontoon in the water. Well, that adds a lot of drag, and so it will turn you towards the side that you're, uh, you're favoring. All right, so let's go straight towards that. I have full flaps in, which, uh, so I'm going to keep full flaps in, and that will give me a bunch of drag, so I hopefully don't take off. I'm going to keep the speed somewhat slow here. So we see we're going 17 knots, so this is how you would do a high-speed taxi in a, uh, in a seaplane, is you just, you know, you keep below your rotation speed, which is about 65 in this. And as you can see, I can actually do, we're doing 20 knots over the water, which is not bad. So we already have, uh, so this mission's old, as you can see. I think this mission popped up when I went to sell jet fuel. So that kind of gives you an idea of how old it is. All right, and so let's go ahead and... So I'm going to come up on starboard. We'll come back on port. And now, as I go up and down on my arrows, I have my turn set in, so I can change the speed of that turn. Now I'm coming all the way back with the down arrow, and you notice we're both in reverse. We're going to go both into beta. Make sure they're both into beta. Okay, so we, I can leave the engines running as long as it's in beta, because the propellers are flat, and so they're not they're not uh, taking any bite out of the air and so it's just letting us sit here. I should have shut off the lights but uh, I don't I do have a fire axe on me. I thought I had it on me. Now let's jump up in here see if we can't put this bad John out. I should have put firefighting gear on. Hey what's up like 900 people? There we go. This is starting to get where there's a lot of missions. I think I have been on this boat before. I'm not sure. Yes I definitely have been on this one before. Okay, nice. That was an easy fire to put out here. Okay, good. Let's uh, let's see if there's anything I want, need in here. Oh, there's some thermal clothing. Zing. Look at all that thermal clothing. Hmm. Start my own store after this. Oh, I, I don't like clipping. Do not like clipping. Oh, this is interesting. I don't, I don't think I've ever looked up here to actually see. This is interesting. Yeah, very cool. I like looking at these, you know. I like, I enjoy how other people build things, and so it's kind of cool to look, check them out every once in a while, see what people are, how people have built stuff. It's kind of neat, you know. Like I don't do as, like this is good detailing on the walls. I do it sometimes. Like I don't ever do the floor like this, uh, but I do like that. It's kind of neat. So, kind of incorporate some of that into what is that all about? Kind of like cooling, maybe. I don't know. Simulated cooling, decoration. That hatch is upside down. Alright. Please, everybody, act not the fool and don't walk into the propellers. I know it's asking a lot to value your own lives, but let's try to do it here. Okay. S uh, stay. Stay. Get up on me. So five people, there's two in here, and there's three in the drinky poo, so that is our rescue there. 
Uh, you know what? I think we have some time on that mine truck, so what I think I'm going to do is dump these people off first. I think it's a mistake to... I think it is an error in judgment to hang on to these sickly people that... And I don't have any health packs uh, on me, so... Yeah. I don't want these people to die, and it's going to take a long time to do it the other way. Let's do this. Let's dump these people off first, and that would probably be it for the episode, and then... Uh, can uh, do some other stuff later. All right, so we're in, and let's go ahead and we'll go reverse thrust on two. We'll just come up a little bit on that, just out of beta. If we look at our fuel, we start at about 9,050 pounds, and see, we really haven't burned much. We've got about uh, 200 pounds. I think it's 1.8 pounds per liter of diesel if, no, it's 0.84, yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. It's I think it's one point eight four pounds because it's point eight four kilograms per liter of diesel. So uh, kind of puts that in perspective how much we burn. If we burn two hundred pounds side, that's four hundred. You know, so it's forty uh, percent off four hundred. So what are we talking there? Uh, yeah, so so like a hundred and sixty off of that. Yeah, so it's not all that much. We really haven't. We really haven't. Maybe four, five, sixty liters again quickly. Not even looking, but um, don't you know? Check my math at your own risk. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of it off the top of my head. I don't really care too much about it. Let's go see where we need to get these people. All right, so five casualties, hospital. Let's try Holt Town again. It is foggy, but let's go to Holt Town again. So let's go up to set our waypoint there. All right, and let's go ahead. So let's do our checklist. Hydraulics are on. Uh, gear is up. Parking brake is off. Flaps need to go to one. That would be a crash if we had all those on. And we should be good to go. All right. So I would want to turn in the wind, which should be off to my, I believe, my right. Let me look. Yep, off to my right a little bit. It's actually not that bad. It's right there, so that's mostly a headwind. So let's get going. Headwind does matter in game, uh, like it would in real life, so it helps to have a little bit of a headwind. Pause rate. Gear is up. 100 knots. Not at 100 knots yet. There's 100 knots. Flaps coming up. You don't want to yank your flaps up before you get up to speed. The speed the speed is essentially airflow over your control surfaces. It's giving you more lift. The airspeed over your wings giving you more lift. And if you go ahead and yank your flaps up, you're stealing your lift from yourself, and you don't want to do that. So 342, so we're going to put 342 in there, and bingo, that comes on. GPS that I just put in for the turn for Holt Town is in. Holt Town may not be the best best place to go. This one's a hike. I'm not hiking up there. That one's a, This one's a walk, but it's a little bit closer. You know, we could fly over and go to this hospital again. I think where we, where we should go, because you know this is inconsequential distance. Let's go here. Let's go up here. We'll do a, a runway landing, and we'll land at the uh, military base. So let's go up to. I want to go 2,500. As you can see, we're in the pea soup. Uh, if we look at the fog has come in, that's why we're not doing that. We're up to 70% fog. If need be, I'll cut the fog down, but uh, currently we're good. So I'm going to go full throttle here, and I'm going to start bringing my propellers down. So I'm pulling my propellers back, which will give me more blade bite and more speed. So as you can see, we're up to 191, 192. So we're just around 200 knots in this. I'm, I'm going to play with I might go down to three-bladed propellers. Three-bladed propellers puts less load on my engines, which allows me to spin them up to higher RPMs. Higher RPMs, you know, we lose some bite because we're losing a propeller blade, but we're also gaining more RPM, so it's, there's a balance there. And so I should be able to get us up to 200 knots. 200 knots is just a nice round number. You know, a lot of reciprocating planes, most, you know, I would say most of them maybe don't go 200 knots. 200 knots was, you know, especially when I was 
you know, do a flight training. 200 knots was kind of like, oh, that's that's fast, man. You know, that's the holy grail to go 200 knots. You know, because we were like 120, you might get up to 140. In a twin, you might get up to 150. 200 knots, you really have to have a very slippery airplane, and you're starting to get into turboprops, or you're getting into very large engine airplanes. You know, an airplane like this, let me look up what the Mallard's top speed is. You know, I'd say the Mallard, Mallard's, I'd say Albatross is more the size of this uh, plane here. So I'll, I'll look up while we're going. The Albatross is, uh, so uh, top speed is 236 miles an hour. So you need to take 15% of that off for, uh, for knots. So if it is 236, uh, times 0.15 equals uh, 35. So you're talking about 200 knots. So the top speed of the Albatross is 200 knots. The cruise speed is 124 knots. So as you can see, we're probably right about on par of where this airplane should be for speed. So we're going to look at our bearing panel. Uh, bearing at 31. We're headed 31, 031 say it properly. We're only 6.8 nautical miles away. We're going to be there in 2.2 minutes. Okay. So we're going to start slowing down. All right. We need to slow down for temperature a little bit. Uh, it doesn't, it uh, will mildly overheat. I really don't need to slow down much. I probably dip down to maybe 180 knots to not overheat. But I am going to slow down. The reason is I'm buying myself time. We're socked in the fog here. And I need to find this airport. And I used to have an ADF system that would allow me to do instrument approaches down to like 200 feet. I don't have an ADF system anymore. And so I can't do that instrument approach. And so if need be, I will reduce the fog manually, but try not to. So we're gonna go right here at the end of the runway. And so I'm gonna change this up. So the wind, we knew the wind was from our, we took off this direction. So the wind is somewhere here. So we want to land on this runway. So the wind's here, we want to land into the wind. And so we want to do a long final, especially when the weather is bunk like this. So we're going to set our new waypoint to there. And I'm going to make a little bit of an instrument approach. So we're going to be there in a minute. All right, so I need to check my trim here. Oh, get out of there, you. You guys can't see that anyways, but. Um, all right, so what we want to do here is, I want to get down to, 1500 and the reason I'm doing this is we're going 133 knots the distance is very short so the difference between hitting this mountain and here is probably pretty I'm trying to think how far are we 0.7 we're 1.3 nautical miles so we're probably somewhere around here let me check so that's my guess my guess could be wildly off let's check it oh we're close all right so we can dump Let's go down to uh, 1,000. Let's go down all the way to 500 feet. Okay. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna start increasing my props. I'm gonna go full prop pitch. I'm gonna start pulling some power back. I'm buying myself time. Let's see what's my heading. Uh, 027. I need to do this quickly here. 027. 027. Heading hold. Okay. And then what is my I need to set the next waypoint is the end of the runway set. Okay, end of the runway set in. Let's let it turn for us. I'm slowed down 88 knots, and, you know, I'm getting behind the airplane. We're only three minutes away, and we're in the fog. So in a real instrument situation, you really have to worry about this stuff. Lane of light taxi should have come off already. You have to worry about this stuff. You have to plan ahead. You can't get behind the airplane. We're still at 2,000 feet. I need to get down to 500 here. So I'm going to help it. I'm going to dip the nose. I can help the autopilot, but I'm going to keep the autopilot on. Now, I've talked about it before. The autopilot's job is not to do your job for you. The autopilot's job is workload reduction. So as you can see, I'm getting busy. And so I need, I'm going to use the autopilot as a tool. It's a tool. It's not, you know, it's not in charge of the airplane. You still are, but it's a tool to help reduce your workload. All right, so as you can see, I'm manually giving it more. So like I said, this airplane needs more control input. And so the uh, the airplane that this autopilot came off was tuned for that airplane, which is a much smaller airplane. So I just set us to 250 feet. We're going to be there in two minutes. 
And so we should be on a direct line, yep, perfect, direct line course for that. So. And so we may or may not see this. So we're within uh, 1.9 nautical miles. Gear's coming down. Flaps are going full, and I'm going to add power. Remember, flaps add a lot of drag. As you add your flaps in, as you drop your gear, gear doesn't really affect it in-game because we don't have the drag off the gear. They're always dragged. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, in real life, one of the reasons you put your gear down early to help you slow down is the gear adds a lot of drag. Drop your gear, it starts pulling off speed. And then as you add your flaps in, you're generally to the point where you, uh, you know, that's going to add a lot more drag as well. And so you need to power up. As you can see, we're skimming the water. Uh, I'm checking my altitude here. Okay, so when I have full flaps in, my autopilot's not really doing its, doing its job because, again, I don't have... The clamps are set to too small a numbers. They're set for that other seaplane. They're not set for this seaplane. So you kind of need to set your, you know, your uh, autopilots up for your vehicles, for your specific vehicle, because this one, I'm going uh, to leave the autopilot on for now. I'm just going to help it. So I'm going to add a bunch of trim in here. I don't want us to descend anymore. So I'm trying to get us up to about 250. And let's see where we're at. Why are we over there? Okay. Why is this, what? Okay. Why are you misbehaving, dude? What the hell is going on here? Why are we way the hell over here? That's weird, man. Okay, we're going to come in for, we're going to come in very quickly for this runway here. It is too foggy to be screwing around here. Okay. What's my bearing there? 114. Okay, let's, I'm going to just do a quick hammer turn on this. One, I'm trying to get us turned here. I want to get us in there. About 300 feet. Problem is we really need that instrument approach for me to be able to see the airport when it's this uh, low. All right, so I need to up the uh, the fog here. The fog is just not helping us here. Fog's coming down here. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and let's let's try to see if we can even see it with the... Okay, so we can barely see this airport. So I'm going to power up. We're going to do a missed approach. So let's do 113 on the heading. Okay, heading hold's coming on. All right. So we're going to do a little missed approach here. So if your approach is bad, you do what's known as a missed approach. And we normally put our gear up. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start us on a new approach path. So I should be able to see this. As you can see, when the fog gets up, how hairy it is. Now before, remember, I had an instrument... I had an instrument approach with my ADF system. I don't have that anymore. It's not working because I had to take the ADF system out. So I used to be able to go in here with no visibility. I can't do that anymore. Okay. All right, let's switch over to GPS and get that turn into the to the south again. And so we're going to go on a right downwind for... Oh, I forget what runway number that is. I used to have them all written down for the ADF approaches. So as you can see, we're starting to get too low. 200 is, you know, you wouldn't be coming at 200. You'd be coming at like 600, but we're not going to see this airport at 600 feet. We need to be down at like 200 to see it with this much fog. I'm going to just go in here and let's see what the fog is. That's not terrible. We'll try it with this much fog. My altitude's all over the place because, like I said, my autopilot uh, is not allowed to command my... So I'm going to trim it. So see my vertical speed? I'm going to trim it so my VSI is just barely positive like there. All right. And so we should be on a downwind here in a second. What are we looking at? So, like, everything is screwed up on this because I don't have enough yaw in there. I don't I don't need more aileron, but I need more yaw. As you can see, my the ball is way over to the right. So I need, like, that much yaw into the autopilot to actually do my turn correctly. That's called a coordinated turn. You'd want to step on the ball, so you use the balls to your right, you'd use your right rudder. And as you can see, that coordinates my turn, and as you can see, we turn much faster. And so I'm gonna coordinate it manually. So all I really need to do is go in the autopilot and increase all of my, my clamps, essentially, so that it will give me more control surface uh, authority. Why are we going 265? What the hell is going on here? Okay, so I'm changing the plans here. Again. 
All right, let's go here. I'm going to manually fly this a little bit. The plane is just turning slow because, like I said, the autopilot's not set up correctly yet. So we need to go to 304, and I'm actually going to overturn it. I'm going to take off the autopilot. This could be a little hairy. Again, like I said, you know, the autopilot's job is workload reduction. And I'm going to do it manually by hand here, and should be able to do it fine, but it's it's just it's workload reduction. I have to visualize this approach. And I don't have, like in real life, I'd have my instrument approach system going. And I'm having to kind of do this. So I'm a little bit north, so I'm at 312, so I'm six degrees north of course. That's on purpose. I want to come up more north. As you can see, I'm too far south. I'm scud running at 200 feet. The weather is continually getting better. As you can see, the fog is dropping off, so that's good. Hopefully none of those people die because that's going to be a pain. I don't have a defib. All right, so I forget what the final runway heading is. It's got to be something like 300. So when that gets around, so when this drops to 300, I'm going to turn and see where we're at. I know this probably doesn't make any sense, but uh, it's instrument approach stuff. As I go further north, this number is going to decrease. If you watch some of my cap air stuff, okay, we're visual. So we can stop that crap. Uh, we can stop the instrument approach once we're visual. We can uh, say continuing, we can land, and landing. Trim is fine. So I have a lot of, uh, you see we're at 0.3? So we have a lot of flapping, so I need a lot of trim. Because the deck angle, the nose has to come up in order to account for all the extra drag that I have on there. I have gear out, I have flaps out. Uh, let's go ahead and start slowing down. As I slow down, I have less uh, air over my wings and, and uh, my control surfaces. So my deck angle needs to come up even more. All right, so here we go. We're, we can dump in a little bit, and we're center line. A little bit of left rudder, so my left wing tip's going to go down first. Pulling off, thrust, 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 coming off. Oh, don't chop too much. Don't chop too much. Oh, I just broke my gear. Okay. I chopped too hard, and I broke my gear. I think I damaged my gear a little bit here. So let's press 3, and let's do break on my... So I have independent brakes as well. If I press three, it will just do my left brake. So it sounded like I broke something. I I uh, chopped the power too much and plopped it, but I didn't want this to take a hundred years. So, but you can see it gets hairy in instrument conditions. Normally, if my ADF system's in there, I have I actually wrote up approaches so I would know. I would know the runway heading. I would know where I'm supposed to intercept the course. I would follow the course in. I would be right on line. But the main thing that kind of made that an ugly approach was the lack of uh, the lack of uh, control authority with the autopilot, as I'm not able to not able to use the autopilot completely because it's not able to give enough control to the uh, to the rudders. It's not wasn't able to give enough control to the elevators. So I, I broke something here. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to park it on the runway. Screw it. Alright. Put the parking brake on. Let's go into beta. Alright. Let's just leave their engines running. Why not? <laughs> Look at this. Good carcass. Carcass is our us here. Another successful mission. See if I can get a low shot of all this death. There we go. That guy in the background's uh he's not very happy, but he should be. He's the only one that lives. Alright. Get that door down. Alright. You follow me. Oh, there's two. Two have survived. Come on. I'll try to get these carcasses out. Did I what did did I? No, I didn't break anything, I don't think. Huh. Okay. I was afraid I hit that, that uh, left gear too much. But you often, you pretty much, you always land on one wheel before the other. You know, the likelihood of that you're exactly precisely getting all the wheels. But let's say the wind is a 45 degree angle to your uh, front and left. So you're going to want to touch down on your left main. And you're going to use your rudder. Come on, you go inside, please. Listen to me. Um, you're going to touch down on your left main. And so what that's going to do is that's going to cause the plane to drift to the left. And so what you'll do is you kick opposite rudder, and that will straighten your nose out. And so that you track 
uh, in the correct direction. Okay, I'm gonna have to carry all these people. I'm just throwing them in there. I don't have a defib. But uh, what I'm gonna make is like a little. Uh, I do need to put some more equipment downstairs in the lower section. But I've also I'm gonna make some modules that will have like if I'm gonna go for a rescue, I can just pull pull the module and stick it in there. Yay! So as long as they don't die, I'll get a little money. I'm gonna buy this base too. I like this base. That's a nice big hangar. This is a good location. You know, we don't have any real any bases up north here. That uh, this isn't really up north, but you know the Arctic is up north. But uh, we don't have any of these middle area bases that uh, have a hangar that large. And this is also where we sell jet fuel. So. But the fog, the fog, got, you know, the fog started dying as soon as we got up here, which was nice. But without that ADF system, I uh, struggled to get in here. I can do it with GPS. That's not a problem. I just need to, I'm going to write up some new instrument approaches. So essentially what I need to know is I need to know the runway heading, which I have them written down already. I just didn't have time to pull them out. And uh, if I know the runway heading... I essentially can write, I can draw a bearing off of the runway heading and then come in on that. And so you actually come in on like a 10 mile final, which is south of the Sawyer Islands pretty much. So playing this slow that I can get down like 65, 70 knots, probably 75 knots is as slow as I should get this plane. It, uh, you know, I can, I can run something like a five mile final, no problem. All right, good. So that is done. Mission's complete. So that was a little bit hairy at the end there. But uh, got, got, I feel like got a little hairy having the having the issues with, you know, the fog. And it's actually pretty windy, too. I bet that. But the autopilot is definitely the thing I need to work on next. Is The autopilot is giving me grief because it is not allowing me to use my full control surfaces. So I'll fix that. As you can see, the wind is pretty strong. It's blowing us around. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, so we're at 48% wind, so... Not too bad. We had a safe landing. Um, did we land with a tailwind? No, we had a headwind. We had a, a right quartering. Uh, we had a right headwind. That wasn't too bad. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. You know, that was a little bit of this, a little bit of that all over the place. We got to do a bunch of different vehicles. That was a lot of fun. So I am going to off screen buy this. So we will start here and we will own this hangar now. So this will be nice. We can put things in there and work on it from there. So hope you guys enjoy that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.